What's up internet? Welcome to Fiction Forge. On this episode, we're going to add the acrylic dirty pouring technique to our artistic arsenal. And then we'll be using it to take a video game themed relief sculpture to the next level. The subject of this badass artistic experiment you might ask? Well he's a sci-fi ninja assassin with a chip on his shoulder from one of our favorite games. It's Stalker from Warframe. Mike and myself have been playing Warframe fairly regularly since it came out four years ago and it's definitely a favorite of ours. With its own distinct aesthetic, an in-game that is both stunning to watch and satisfying to engage in. It's definitely a title that brings you back time and time again with their ever-expanding universe. Warframe is an online free-to-play third-person shooter where you assume the identity of a badass super suit space ninja being operated by a superhuman child. Behind this, you're still just a child. There is no shortage of formidable foes in this game. But amongst the most feared is Stalker. Stalker is a shadowy reflection of yourself that drops in randomly from time to time to pick a fight and try assassinate you. He seems to be hired by the various factions in the game in retaliation for striking a decisive blow against them. Anyway, we like the cut of his jib and we're gonna attempt to make some art with it. Whether you play the game or not, I'm sure you can appreciate that. Acrylic pouring is a technique of pouring paint onto a canvas rather than using a brush or some other application tool. Dirty is simply a term for mixing more than one paint color in the same container before adding it to the canvas or substrate. This refers to anything added to the paint to dilute it and help it flow more easily. It should also reinforce the paint and help it keep its binding strength. It can also extend or shorten the dry time. It is possible to cultivate the formation of cells in your paint with a few different additives. Mixing low density additives into the lower layers of paint will cause them to rise up through the layers with higher density. Some cell inducing agents are silicone oil, water, isopropyl alcohol, and the blowtorch. For our pouring we used mostly PVA glue and water as our pouring medium, and to help cultivate cell formation we preferred silicone oil over isopropyl alcohol. Here are some techniques used to manipulate the paint in order to achieve different patterns and effects. We have broken them down into techniques for when you're pouring, and for after you've poured. Keep in mind these are just a few. There are many more out there for you to discover and come up with yourself. Also we're going to be using the word canvas to loosely represent whatever place we found to paint, i.e. your painty place. All the canvases we are going to be using are thrown away hardboard that we cut up. And remember, even your face can be a painty place. Here are some techniques for when you're pouring. The cup flip is when you mix your colors of choice in your cup and then flip the canvas face down on top of it. Then you grab the cup and the canvas firmly and flip them around together so the cup is sitting on top with all its paint still inside. Then you lift the cup and let the paint run out over the canvas. The push-pull method follows the same method as the cup flip. But instead of lifting the cup, slide it around the canvas to spread the paint. Then you can move it to the middle and lift it. 
A layer of paint on the canvas can help the puddle to spread. The funnel method makes use of something with a narrow spout like a syringe or a piping bag to guide the flow of paint onto the canvas. The swirl method refers to while you're pouring your paint on the canvas, you gently swirl your hand to create ring patterns in the paint. Spinning refers to using something like a fan or a drill like we did to spin the canvas allowing you to use centrifugal force to spread the paint around. Dipping is when you mix the paint on a flat surface instead of in a cup or funnel and then press your canvas against it to spread the paint and create interesting patterns. Okay, and now for the techniques for after you're done pouring. The four main weapons in your arsenal to manipulate the paint once it's on the canvas are heat, air pressure, tools and gravity. Heat helps bubbles to rise to the surface and become cells. It also shortens the paint's dry time and helps patterns and cells to set before they drift apart. Air pressure is a way to maneuver the paint without physically touching it. Something like a straw is great for altering fine details, while something like a hairdryer will also incorporate heat and have a much more dramatic effect. Just about any hand-sized object can be used as a tool to maneuver the paint physically. I used a ruler here because it was the closest thing around but I'm sure many other things would work just as well. Just be careful not to tamper with it too much or you'll destroy the patterns. Using gravity by tilting the canvas is an extremely effective way of spreading patterns and shifting paint around the canvas. Once again though, don't tamper with the patterns too much in this way or you'll destroy them. Relief sculpture is a technique where sculpted elements remain attached to a solid background usually made of the same substance. We figured this would be an interesting test for the dirty pour technique and may result in some impressive, easy to make art. So leave your brushes at home and grab a squeezy paint bottle and a blowtorch. It's time to dirty pour ourselves a stalker. Okay, so the first step in this project will be creating the 3D element for us to pour over later. So we begin creating stalker's face with a ball of tin foil that will create the negative space to house some LEDs in a battery pack later. Then we'll build up the shape with paper clay till it has the basic form we're looking for. Let's also add some fingers stretching out below the face to help sell the illusion. Then we add in stalker's characteristic face pattern and drill out the holes for the LEDs. We decided to give it a layer of black paint before we dirty pour to help it flow across the canvas. Spinning it helped get the paint in all the hard to reach places so even if the dirty pour doesn't totally cover it there'll be no bald spots. Time to add our mix of red and black paint with PVA glue, water and a few drops of silicone oil. Let's pour moving out from the center allowing it to spiral out and help cover more ground. Hey, it's the moment of truth. Time to see what we got. Ooh, delicious. <laughs> and one more layer of paint for good measure. Oh yes, totally chuffed with this result. 
I think this is definitely worth some platinum DE. <coughs> Let's give it the blowtorch to set the patterns and help any remaining bubbles to release. Now we can rig up some red LEDs in a battery pack and insert them in the cavity we left at the back. Which is also the place you hang it from. Ah yes, I can practically taste the dread blueprint already. Patreon helps you to support creators that produce content you want to see more of through a subscription based service. It also helps us to connect with our audience in order to produce better content. It has been quite the journey into the world of dirty poor painting. It makes fantastically beautiful art with little more than a few colors of acrylic paint and a few minutes of your time. This is even something you can do with your kids. Or as a party trick. Seriously, give it a try for yourself. You'll be surprised at how fun it is and people not in the know will be amazed at your newfound ability to paint abstract art like a boss. Thanks again for watching everybody. Hope this gets a few more people making awesome dirty pour art. At the beginning of this episode we weren't entirely sure dirty pouring a relief sculpture would work or even look decent. But I think it's safe to say that this was a resounding success. Although I'm sure it's not everyone's cup of tea. We would love to see any creations this inspires you to make. Link them to us on our Facebook page. Join us next time for a very festive fiction forge. Till then. Hope to see you around the forge in the future. And remember... Wizards only, fools. Keep it tight.